Okay, let's start with uh, unit three review on populations. Okay, uh, first one, it's about the uh, comparison uh, between the, the generalists and the specialists. Okay, uh, well, as you can see from the name, uh, generalists, they can live in pretty general conditions. So they have a much better tolerance of conditions such as, uh, you know, temperature, salinity, okay, humidity, uh, pH. Uh, and uh, the overlapped region, as you can see here, uh, the graph represents the uh, the graphs here represent the niche of uh, each species. Okay, and the overlapped region, which is in red, uh, that's the competition part. So if uh, if the generalists uh, move in with the specialists, so uh, there will be a lot of fierce competitions between them, and uh, the, the specialists will survive if they are highly, you know. Uh, specific to the condition where uh, the journalists may not have a clear advantage. Okay, but if the condition leans away from the ideal situation, the ideal setting from the, uh, for the uh, specialists, then the general the generalists was uh, thrive, which is represented by the area right here. Okay, so over time, over time. Now this is a static picture right here, but over time, if we say all right, uh, this is the this is the niche. Uh, comparison right now so what will happen in the future okay so this group of individuals will be able to reproduce more and the specialists will drop as a result uh, this group right here uh, they would also uh, increase in population so this is how invasive species actually hurts the um, the uh, the specialists okay and one of the reasons why we are facing uh, we are seeing a lot more species going uh, and being endangered and threatened uh, we have case selective species and r selective species uh, so, uh, so I like to use cockroaches as an example, cockroaches and ants as an example of uh, illustration of the R selective species because they are, you know, whenever you see cockroaches or ants, there you see a lot. You don't see usually just one of them. Uh, so they are highly reproductive, okay, because they reproduce very fast. They re the reproduction time is very short, usually weeks to days. Uh, they mature very early. They usually live short. Uh, unlike humans, humans, uh, mammals, elephants, uh, we tend to be case selective species because um, uh, we don't reproduce a lot and uh, we are more of a specialist compared to the, uh, uh, to the R selective species. We live long, way longer than the R selective species. All right. So, uh, so because of these differences, R selective species are more likely to be invasive species species okay and uh they have uh uh and th there's a term uh called biotic potential which is the uh, maximum reproductive rate of a population in ideal conditions like if food it's perfect okay good supply if space is plenty then uh, then they will take full advantage to reproduce and grow the population at the maximum speed and that it's the uh, full uh, uh, full exponential growth so that's the uh, biotic potential right there so uh, so sometimes uh, they would um, they may not ask you like oh which of the following it's an R selective species but uh, they would uh, infer something is an R selective species and then you have to select the conditions or the features of the species, like, you know, our selected species will be the ones on the left or right here. All right, survivorship curves. Uh, we have three types, uh, type one and type two, which is the one uh, of the above, okay? Uh, they are more likely for K selected species. Okay? They tend to survive pretty well. They tend to survive pretty well and, um, and uh, and type one, especially, most of them can survive. Uh, type two, it's like a half and half that kind of uh, situation. Some could, some couldn't make it. Uh, type three, though, type three, it's more likely to be uh, an R selective species. They just you know uh, can't uh, really survive for the most uh, individuals. Some will, and uh, if they are able to survive, they usually live pretty long, like trees. Okay, so they have a lot of seeds, but not all seeds can get to you know sprout and germinate and sprout into a little small tree and later on become a big tree. So just make sure that you understand the differences between these three types. Okay, and make sure you can draw the graphs here. 
Next one, uh, carrying capacity. In the next few slides, we'll see a graph regarding to a population. Okay, actually, we uh, saw carrying capacity earlier, right? The carrying capacity is the upper limit of a population. Okay, so uh, uh, the carrying capacity, it's a limit, okay, because, uh, well, we have limitations on resources like food and space, okay? Uh, it's not really a fixed number. So, uh, so the graph right here shows you like a little flat line, right? Horizontal line. It's like a ceiling. It could change, although it's difficult to change. Uh, it could change if you have a discovery or a major breakthrough, like maybe we can uh, grow food, okay, in a very efficient way so hey we can just uh support a larger population okay we discover new space to live okay then that's a higher carrying capacity now uh we don't know usually we don't know if uh what or we don't know what the carrying capacity is so what's got to happen is to you know try to well i mean the population will quote unquote try to find out by just keep on living its life, their lives, and uh, it, it will go past the uh, go past the uh, carrying capacity. And because of the limitation, there will be a population crash. Okay, there will be a population crash. So, uh, so what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen is that uh, it will go up, and then it will fluctuate like this. Okay, so so that's more of a realistic representation of the graph. Okay. Uh, so population oversuit, I um, mean, you know, the, the reproductive oversuit, and that leads to a population crash, okay? And then uh, we can figure out the carrying capacity if we see a little uh, fluctuation around a certain value, okay? Uh, population growth and resource availability, limited availability of resources, and therefore uh, population growth is always limited by the carrying capacity, which is from the environmental resistance. Okay, so very simple idea. All right, now, this is more about our human population, not just uh, population in general. We use this, uh, we use this um, a structure diagram to show how uh, a country or a city uh, population would grow or shrink or become stable over time in the future. Uh, so here we have the uh, broad base on the left that shows a population increase. Uh, if it's uh, more or less the same size or all the age groups, then we say it's a stable population. And then we can see there's a population decline if the base is very narrow. And the countries of these uh, three age structure diagrams are shown uh, right below. We have India, U.S., and Russia. Okay. Now, what could be asked is that can you use the structure, a structure diagram to infer the following uh, items like education level, access to birth control, women's rights, income level, uh, economy type, diet. Diet is one because uh, uh, if, uh, if a country is like, uh, uh, experiencing a rapid increase, then the diet is less likely to be uh, meat oriented because people are going to be poor. And, uh, and they cannot afford meat, okay? The cost of living, okay, uh, will be uh, in a way to, um, uh, uh, another thing that we can infer based on the diagrams, like uh, if we have, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, again, using the broad base, okay, on the left, uh, then right here, okay, we can infer that the cost of living would be pretty small. Uh, education level of uh, women would be uh, limited, uh, and uh, opportunities for women will be limited as well. So these are the things that we can infer. Uh, infant mortality rate uh, tends to be high in, uh, in countries where uh, they are experiencing a rapid growth. Okay. And then we have total fertility rate. We have the, uh, the how many kids per woman. Okay, how many kids per woman. Uh, that it's the total fertility rate. And then um, uh, things are all uh, would, so usually they have a question of how to delay the total fertility rate, uh, I mean, total, well, to lower the total fertility rate. One way we can do that is to delay the marriage and also delaying the age that they bear the first child. That's what I want, that's what I meant to say. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, give more opportunities for women in terms of career and education. If they have uh, time to develop their career to get education, then they will delay their marriage and the number of uh, the, the delay their marriage 
okay, at the age of, uh, of bearing the first child, and therefore they would have fewer kids as a result. Uh, family to access, uh, I mean, access to family planning would be a huge thing, and that ties into urbanization as well. Uh, healthcare and nutrition will be another, another one. That is a reflection of the, the development of the society. Uh, two other things that are related uh, to this topic would be uh, infant mortality rate. Okay, and the U.S. is unusually uh, 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 unusually high uh, on this uh, data point because of the uh, uh, lack of good healthcare access and also a substance abuse is another major factor. So uh, we have the highest uh, infant mortality rate among all the developed countries. Uh, the replacement level fertility rate is another huge one. Uh, the fact that uh, the total fertility rate may drop below 2.1 may hint okay, that there will be a population decrease. Now, it's not a guarantee though, okay, if you say, oh, the total fertility rate drop below the replacement fertility rate, would it lead to a decrease in population right away? The answer is no, because there's a thing called population momentum. Just look at China. They have been, uh, uh, ex they experienced a total fertility rate below, <laughs> below the, uh, below the uh, replacement fertility level for a long time. And this year, it's the uh, 2023, uh, 22 and 23. It's the first year they experienced a drop in uh, the, uh, the overall population. Okay. Uh, two important numbers to know. 2.1 is for uh, developed countries and 3.5 or above is for less developed countries. All right. And uh, then we have the uh, over, uh, calculation part. Uh, population change, it's per 1,000. Uh, and we add up all the uh, positive changes and then we minus the negative changes. So uh, uh, crude birth rate, immigration, and then we have crude death rates and immigration. Okay, we add them up and then we subtract them. Uh, very easy. Uh, if we have to change the percentage, which you may be asked to do that, we just move a decimal place. Okay, so 15 per thousand becomes 1.5 per 100. Simple math. Uh, doubling time is a guaranteed topic. Uh, just make sure that uh, two things. First, uh, the percent change, you do not change to decimal. Just leave it there. Okay, And then uh, the doubling time and the percent change can swap. So uh, if they tell you the doubling time, uh, then uh, you can also uh, swap them to find out the percent change as a result. Okay, so that's one thing you can do with this calculation. Also make sure that you know the density dependent factors and the density independent factors. Uh, this should be pretty obvious. Uh, just get ready to answer these uh, factors or propose these, suggest these factors on the free response uh, sections. Okay, and last but not least, we have the demographic transition. Uh, the demographic transition model, there are four stages, uh, one, two, three, four. And uh, the first stage is the, uh, uh, the, the pre-industrial stage where you have high birth rate and high death rates of the population. It's more or less unchanged. Uh, and then the death rate drops because it becomes uh, more developed. And then you see a most rapid uh, stage of uh, increase. In this uh, stage two. And in stage three, it's where the birth rate begins to drop. So the population is still growing, but then it's growing at a slower pace. And in stage four, it's where you see a stable population and even a drop in population. Okay, so again, make sure you check out uh, the uh, check out the uh, uh, the uh, the one page review. Okay, so uh, so that you can get more preparation for the AP exam.